Ooh, it's another one. Uh, been a week or 10 days or whatever, because there was a lot of traveling going on. It's October 12th, 2022 at one o'clock, 1300 for you military types. Um, interesting stuff going on. Going to try and cover a lot of ground because I was out of town doing ZT work. I was in DC. I was in Seattle. I was in Dallas. I was in Miami. I was in North Carolina. And finally I was home. So um, lots of people seeing lots of stuff. Everybody's talking about ZT. People seem to understand it. Small, mid-sized business, uh, one person shops, enterprises, uh, governments, state and local. I think the conversation has moved past uh, the initial points that people try and wrap their head around, which is good. Um, if you've looked at my newsletter, there was an article this week from an IT news group in Africa talking specifically about zero trust in the context of the African continent. I thought that was super cool. Um, I had a call with some folks in Africa about a month ago on, on the ZT stuff. So very interesting to see that that's showing up in the IT stuff in Africa. Um, on top of that, let's kind of go through uh, an announcement that I think is worth noting. I want to put this out here first because this, to me, seems like one of the first major uh, system integrators, VARs, um, service providers, technology providers that's big, big, that's doing specific work to enable ZT. Dell, uh, Dell Technology specifically has launched a uh, center of excellence. Um, this was October 4th, Round Rock, Texas, which love Round Rock, it's a great place. Um, they have a ZT uh, center of excellence now uh, and basically provides a cybersecurity blueprint for customers to test environments on a US DOD approved zero trust architecture before broad deployment. Pretty cool idea. Um, new Dell cybersecurity services endpoint cyber protection solutions can help customers build cyber resilience. Dell aims to simplify ZT cybersecurity adoption by streamlining integration across IT environments. So I'll put the link to the article in here, but this is a really big organization that's putting some serious effort behind ZT. Uh, they talk about that they're going to augment and update this whole thing with uh, follow on COE uh, in a combination with Cyberporn International. Uh, at the Maryland Innovation uh, Security Institute in Missy in spring 2023 at Dreamport, which if you're in the D.C. neck of the woods, you probably know where that air, area is. The U.S. Cyber Command's premier cybersecurity innovation facility. And then Dell is doing a bunch of stuff in this space to validate, test, deploy, innovate around ZT. So I personally think this is a great indicator that this year, uh, from October 1 of this year to October 1 of or September or whatever, end of next year is the year for ZT to finally become um, strategically positioned as far as adoption. So no more concept, no more theory, or not as much. And then now it becomes a real thing. Okay, so that's cool. Well done, Dell. Clap, clap. Super, super. Uh, I always like to beat up on insurance companies because I don't like insurance companies and I think that they pretty much rip people off. Um, I want to point out one more thing, and this won't take long because this was super easy to do. Uh, there's an insurance company that I have to do business with because I run my own LLC and I have to have cybersecurity insurance for some of the contract stuff that I do. Now, these folks sent me a bill and they upped my premium, never had a claim, never had anything going on, never had whatever um, over the course of the last year. But they upped my premium because that's what these folks do. I don't know, inflation, whatever. But they sent me a bill for $2,300. I'm a one person shop. Um, that's a lot of money to me. So I thought, okay, if they're going to bill me $2,300 to keep my policy with them, even though I've never had a claim and whatever, how good are they at their security? Um, I'm not breaking any laws. I'm doing everything above board, perfectly legal. However, comma, um, tickling some electrons and looking around really quickly, I found 25 misconfigured vulnerable systems talking on the internet for this particular insurance company that's valued at billions of dollars that sent me a bill for two plus thousand dollars. Now me, it's the cost of doing business, whatever. I can't not deal with it. So it has to be what it has to be. It's the cheapest policy I could get. It sucks and it's stupid, but it is what it is. Here they are sending me a bill for 2,300 bucks. I find 25 vulnerable systems, misconfigurations, etc. cetera. Uh, I see an IIS Windows server misconfigured. Oh, and their certificate issues are all jacked up too. Uh, this is old IIS, really old. Um, it was last updated October 21st of 2020, so quite a while ago. Uh, here's some web server information, which could be pretty easy to mess with if you felt like it. Uh, login credentials, more server. Um, this is their stuff in another country. 
Uh, here's a system where you can file your claims that is totally vulnerable that you could rip to shreds. Uh, at least they updated this one September 16th of 2022. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, yeah, there's uh, information around their mail servers and configuration issues that they have in a variety of systems. Um, you can get quotes and here's their quoting system that's misconfigured. Uh, yeah. And uh, all their AWS stuff is pretty screwed up too. So I just like to point that out because it's not fun to um, get bills and it's not fun to pay insurance premiums. But the fact that these folks raise, you know, a small business and LLCs, um, you know, premiums and whatever else, like I personally don't think that's really cool. But anyway, let's talk about the Uber thing. Uh, the Uber CISO um, verdict, whatever else going on. I learned some stuff reading about this that I wasn't familiar with. Uh, and I think that it's worth having the conversation around this, this issue. So uh, I'd love to know what other people think, but this is, this is what's out there. This is on Security Boulevard. Um, Mike Rothman, October 10th. Security circles are all a flutter regarding the guilty verdict of Joe Sullivan, former CISO of Uber, on charges of obstructing justice and actively hiding a felony. You can read the Washington Post coverage. Um, you can argue about the verdict was fact or wrong, blah, blah, blah. This guy who wrote this article, Mike Rothman, says he agrees with it. I agree with it too. Sullivan hid information from his new CEO and the FTC. If there's any two federal organizations you don't screw with, it's the IRS and the FTC. Like, I would rather take on the CIA and the FBI than I would take on the FTC and IRS. Now, here's where things got really interesting for me. Sullivan is a former prosecutor. So he should know better, right? Now, me, I'm not an attorney, nor is the person who wrote this. Um, my opinion doesn't hold much water, but there's a lot of attorneys that are also saying they support the verdict as well. Um, Sullivan, the CISO's position was that he was following orders also rings hollow. Even in the military, you have a duty to do the right thing. If someone gives you an unlawful order or tells you to, I don't know, execute civilians or do something really horrible, you have a requirement to do the ethical upright thing and say, I'm not doing that. I'm reporting you, whatever else, and come and deal with the fallout. Um, money talks. It's the ultimate evil. It drives people to do bad things. This is perfect proof. Um, for those who focus on the aspect of indictment regarding the ransom paid in 2016, that's not really the point. Um, many organizations pay ransoms, even though technically that is illegal. If you pay a ransom, technically that's illegal. But people do it all the time. Um, this author says, I don't believe Sullivan was prosecuted for paying off the attackers. If they were prosecuting someone for paying off ransomware attackers, there'd be thousands of people in trouble right now, but they don't. He got fired from Uber because he wasn't honest with the new CEO. There's probably some kerfuffle there, but whether or not the new CEO knew about it and whatever else, mm, okay. Um, the DOJ is throwing the book at him because he covered it up. He doctored emails. And this is all public knowledge. This is all out there. You can go read the indictment, that stuff. So the point is, it's not the crime, it's the cover-up. To err is human, but to lie about it and cover it up is criminal, which I think is pretty interesting too. So there's a couple of other things in this, in this particular article that talks about what you should really be concerned about because there was other people that were armchair quarterbacking on top of this Uber deal um, that were talking about what must change and then uh, you know how this was put together, whatever else, and then is this a a scapegoating issue, whatever. I mean, number one, if you're a CISO, know that you're a scapegoat. I mean, you are, yes, you, you, you probably have got a pretty good line on helping and doing the right thing. And I hope the company's empowering you to make change. However, when things go sideways, somebody's going to burn. The new kid at the dinner table is going to be the first one to get cooked. And the CISO is the easiest target to get popped and tossed out of, um, out of the space. So know that. I, I just think that if you don't know that, you're deluding yourself. This dude did a bunch of bad, illegal shit. Um, if you cover up, that's wrong. The intent matters. Intent matters. The approach, the outcome. Um, disclosure, right? So makes makes the verdict easy. But I, I think that what we see in this particular instance is folks are freaking out about what does this mean for CISOs um, blah, blah, blah. Are we, are we concerned about CISOs no longer having a seat at the table? If you're a CISO, know that you're a sacrificial lamb. And if you take that job, make sure you get paid because you'll be the one to get crucified. Okay, cool.
But on the other side of it, don't do illegal shit. Um, don't cover things up. And ultimately, if things go awry, have the intestinal fortitude to stand up and say, you know what, here's what's up. Whistleblow if you have to. Uh, I, I think that this is probably a good line on what went wrong or what went on with Mudge and whatever else. I mean, he got paid. He did it pretty smart. He whistle blew. You know, it's on the other side of the equation, but he had the integrity to at least whistleblow after he got paid. So smart for him and kind of keeps with the, the line of, you know, what you can do. But, um, you know, I don't think that this is a scapegoat precedent. There's a whole lot of stuff out there that's published uh, that talks about that. Um, it's not. It, this is egregious. This is doing the wrong thing. This is a lack of integrity. This is a guy that was a prosecutor doing stuff that they teach you in law school, like day three, don't do that stuff. So I think he's going to get everything that's coming to him. And unfortunately for him, um, he deserves it. Like you call down the thunder, bro. So, you know, be ready to reap the whirlwind because it's coming your way. Don't mess with the FTC. <clears throat> uh, if you've never read through Reddit and you're one of those marketing people or one of those feed people in leadership positions, CEOs, whatever, that sells product into the space, go become a member of r slash cybersecurity on Reddit and read through the stuff that people post on there. Um, number one, it's hilarious. Number two, you get really, really good insights into what's going on here. I won't say the name of the company because I'm not trying to get myself in trouble because there could be libel or slander stuff. But if you do a really quick search through r slash cybersecurity and look for the name of a particular technology, you you know, whatever, it's some antivirus product, something, you'll get a whole lot of interesting intel about what people actually think about it. Now, this is what I'm looking at now is a thread on one of the most prolific, uh, well-funded super solutions that's out there that people buy all the time that has crazy marketing and whatever else. Um, just I'm going to read you a couple snippets of what people are saying on Reddit and why this is so valuable if you're trying to get information from customers, because here people can be keyboard warriors and they'll say what they really think. Uh, so this is uh, problems with X product. Again, I'm not saying what the name of the product is. Threats undetected. In the past few days, my company decided to run a POC with other vendors to determine if some threats were flying under the radar of our X product. Surprisingly, the other vendors, less expensive ones, showed more detections than X product. Has anyone here faced the same situation recently? So they're asking the community this. Um, I've seen posts from earlier this year that says that this, quote, AI thing of X product is overrated and is just fluffy marketing. Any advice? And then here's where you get the intel. Um, X product... <laughs> These are quotes from a person whose job is titled as a SOC analyst. And that's why I say they get to be keyboard warriors. So you get what they really think uh, is absolute trash. We ran a POC using open source detection tools and basically proved X product was missing all kinds of serious shit on the wire. Quote, their support ran through hoops trying to say things like it's our, the customer's deployment until we showed them they were literally sourcing from the same logs. X product just blows. I'm talking to a few others who use it basically have shown the same thing. Everyone's running out of their contracts and looking to jump ship. Um, one more because, again, these are great. Um, X product is more flash than substance. We just did a POV on X product and I told them straight up nothing blew my socks off. They found one gateway misconfig and acted like they saved us from a breach. I ended it there and they still tried a hard sales angle that made me want to hang up immediately. Um, side note from this particular engineer. Um, I recommend everyone who interacts with vendors study social engineering because that's what these fools do. Uh, so again, if you're if you're looking for insight and valuable information and things that can really be useful in the context of knowing what's going on on the ground with a product inside of cybersecurity, go look at Reddit, go read through it, become a member of r slash cybersecurity, and you'll get crazy bits of super valuable information all the way from the marketing to the product, the rollout to who's using what, where, I'm telling you, you can't get better stuff than this right here. So I would go look at that. Um, um, this was notable as well. Um, comical would probably be a, a good way to put it. White House unveils ambitious cybersecurity labeling effort modeled after Energy Star. Okay, if you've ever seen those Energy Star stickers when you go to places, you can tell that there's a lot of shenaniganing going on there. Shenaniganing, is that a word? Shenanigans? Um, around that. And 
this is not a knock on the politics side of it. I don't care about that. This is really just that this is not enforceable. It doesn't make a lot of sense. The White House National Security Council will announce plans Tuesday for a consumer product cybersecurity labeling program intended to improve digital safeguards on internet connected devices. 50 representatives from consumer product association manufacturing companies at technology think tanks will convene at the White House on October 19th for a workshop on the voluntary effort ahead of an expected 2023 launch. The White House briefly described the effort in a document released Tuesday, which I have the document in front of me, outlining various cybersecurity initiatives. The administration plans to start with recommending three or four cybersecurity standards about IoT. So they're linking start small IoT, move whatever. So um, the administration is working with European Union to align standards. Okay, so there's immediately a, a, a flaw in this approach. You're talking about European Union coordinating with the US and things being streamlined and smooth. Not a good way to do stuff, not going to work very well, but just know that. So follow on to that. Um, the White House hopes the program will reward companies that invest in cybersecurity while also helping consumers find safer products, a status quo in which products hit the market quickly, leaving consumers to muddle through or ignore uh, pro products. Cybersecurity features is not sustainable. Um, give me 100 people in a room and go ask 100 people if they care about their thermostats cybersecurity sticker that comes from the government. Or do they care about the fact that they can wirelessly take care of their thermostat in their house? Ask them if they know that that's part of the way that this whole thing is supposed to work. Now, this document goes even further down the rabbit hole and really screws up on the way that it's putting things in place because it talks about the way that they're going to mandate around the products itself. But here's an issue. Most of the products that we're looking at that do IoT, OT things aren't manufactured here in the United States. Where do we get them from overseas? And on top of that, when you read through the fine line within this particular guidance and documents, it talks about the devices, but it says flat out that they're not going to mandate things around the software that runs the devices. Your wireless IoT, OT thermostat, whatever it is, uh, without software is just a box of parts. So if you're not gonna mandate the software, what good are you doing to mandate the product itself? Um, I think if you're looking for a pretty clear indication of that there's things going on to try and make stuff look really cool and really interesting, but it's not actually going to fix the product or problem, here's a pretty good one. Um, there's a lot of standards. There's already requirements, but you've got to do it in the right way with the right things to solve the right problem. Otherwise, this is literally stickers on a pig, lipstick on stickers on a pig, something like that. Um yeah, so I, I this one, um, um, whatever, just follow me on that. Uh, okay, a couple more before we move on really quickly. Um, there's a fact sheet published October 11th, Biden-Harris administration delivers on strength in American cybersecurity. Um, this is not political again in nature. I don't give a shit about politics. This is just reality. Like, let's talk about this. Number one, this is not a fact sheet. Um, this is not uh facts this is just uh stuff so this is not facts but let's just deal with that because all presidents would put this out uh includes information so to help stakeholders understand cyber threats critical systems we publish more the memorandum on improving the movement of zt describes baseline blah 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 ensuring new critical infrastructure is safe smart secure um they talk about that there's a grant program 185 million dollars okay that's a fact so good um, raising requirements for the, raising the bar through the purchasing power, right? So they talk about purchasing power and how they're changing things there. None of that has been put in place. It does talk about zero trust architecture, um, but it doesn't really say what's what. So more talking without real backing to it. Um, counting ransomware attacks to protect Americans online. Uh, International Counter Ransomware Initiative, which is CRI, bringing together partners from around the globe to address scourge of ransomware. The White House will host international partners October 31 through November 1st to accelerate and broaden this joint work. Um, so there's a ransomware task force thing that's out there. If you're familiar, it's doing some pretty good work. But again, the specifics of that are not really known to most of us. Um, uh, yeah, but where was the one that was really off? Um, developing a new label. Here's the labeling thing again. This is totally a waste of time and effort. Um, Building the nation's cyber workforce. Okay, uh, administration has announced a 120-day cybersecurity apprenticeship sprint to provide skills, pathways, cyber jobs. And from the summit, administration continues to work with partners throughout society on building the cyber workforce. 
Um, if anyone out there has seen people that have gone through this particular apprenticeship program or has even seen funding from it, please let me know because I've been asking around. I haven't found anyone that's actually been lining up on this. And I don't think that we're solving the problem unless people are really using it. Quantum resistant encryption, like let's fix the simple stuff first, folks. Let's not worry about stupid labels. Let's not worry about these other things. Um, quantum is a problem that we should deal with further down the road. I would say dedicate some resources to it, keep it in line, back burner. But my God, we can't stop people from logging in to uh, critical infrastructure. I'm not too concerned about quantum right now. So, you know, points about the, the thing here, I think, is just to note that there's there's so much posturing going on right now, even though that the stuff in cyber is being affected by the posturing. Uh, and lastly, let's see what's my time at here. So I'm at 20 minutes. Yeah, so this should be cool. Um, if you're familiar with like misinformation, disinformation campaigns and how fast this stuff spreads, um, people typically get wrapped up around like, is it hard to detect these? Does it really throw people uh, for a loop when they when they see stuff? Um, there's a great example of just how fast this stuff can spread and people are not even taking the time to react to very overt misinformation, disinformation campaigns. And I have it um, where I can actually run through it. So uh, I won't, I, I guess, stream it or whatever else, but you can kind of, I'll run you through what we're looking at here. So this was on Instagram. It was on Instagram. It was on Facebook. It was on Twitter. Um, luckily, I guess the independent fact checkers uh, could mislead people, which happened after, but this had already been retweeted, reposted, and reliked by 6,000 people in a single afternoon. Um, if you remember, Hurricane Ian came in. Uh, Ian did a bunch of really terrible stuff. Prayers to those people out there. But then there was this person who posted a video that on Instagram took off on other channels that said Florida just out of control right now. And then they said SEAL, um, S-E-A-L, capital letters, which is Navy SEAL. So that's number one thing that should get people understanding this is probably stupid. Um, get spotted in the streets after Hurricane Ian. And you click on the video and look at it. Uh, and it's it it's an elephant seal, and it's running up and down the streets. Now, this actually did happen. This video actually did occur, but it occurred in South America. Um, but there's thousands of people that jumped on this and started going, oh, my God, there's seals running around in the streets of uh, Florida and Fort Myers. Number one, elephant seals don't live in that area. They're just not there. If an elephant seal wound up in the, in the city of Fort Myers, in that area where the hurricane came through, it has either been horribly sucked up from the far regions of the Pacific and other areas and, and wound up in a really long way, a long off uh, spot. Or you should ask the question like, well, does that make any sense? Um, those, those animals don't exist in this space. But this is a great example of folks vectoring in on something, knee-jerk reaction, and then repost, retweet, resell. And then People have to deal with this. Um, the, the actual, not the governor, but the mayor of the city of Fort Myers had to come on and go, there are no elephant seals running around Fort Myers. Sounds dumb and it is stupid. But the point is, if you're able to change a narrative and get this many people to react and repost and retweet and say something about that, what could you do with a really coordinated effort across systems, across infrastructure, um, deep fakes, those types of things? Now, tangentially to that, there was a report of a shark uh, that was swimming in the city around Fort Myers. I thought that's probably a deep fake or BS or video editing, whatever else. Turns out that that was legit. Um, turns out that it was probably a small uh, infant, I think they called it, pup um, bull shark that because they do live in brackish water, because of the surge and tide, and because the water was up feet in that particular area, it had been washed into the street and was swimming around. Now that's real, and it's probably concerning um, that you know there's a shark swimming around someone's uh, yard, but then again, don't, don't you have to deal with that? Uh, or respond to it. There was one when Houston was flooded a few years ago where people showed a video of an alligator that was swimming in someone's front yard. Found out that that was fake over time, but it looked like a pretty good video. Um, the reason that I'm making a note of this is uh, as we come into a politically charged season where there's things going on in, in the Ukraine, there's the threat of nuclear conflict, uh, there's midterm elections, etc. 
um, misinformation, disinformation, video-based campaigns, all that stuff is going to get even hotter. It's going to happen even faster. People are going to be knee-jerk reacting to all these um, instances and these, you know, series of events. You know, be smart because you're going to see uh, a lot of folks that are are um, throwing things into the mix that are trying to guide a narrative. And if it seems well crafted, it's probably national level type of impact. Um, there will be deep fakes. There will be fake videos. There will be fake election news. There will be fake etc. Um, there's actually a couple videos. If you saw the bridge that got blown up in Crimea, um, there's three or four instances where hundreds of thousands of people had latched onto it of fake video of people that were on the bridge at the time that the missile struck. And then they're saying, well, actually, no, it didn't look like it was a missile. When we go through it, it was probably sabotage and whatever else. But it, hundreds of thousands of people had already bought into this. So just be aware um, it's going to happen. You, the human, will be targeted. Don't knee-jerk react to stuff. Uh, and if you've got family and friends that are, and I spend a lot of time dealing with folks, talking them through this, educate them on the realities of what's going on, provide them with alternative sources, alternative uh, responses, those types of things. Um, it's going to get crazy, guaranteed, uh, before the next month and a half, two months is over in the United States. Um, we'll just continue to see misinformation, disinformation, all these things. And social media, and again, I get the uh, asinine nature of the fact that I'm using social to talk about social, but it's the only platform I have. Um, social media will be the vehicle to introduce those false narratives and misinformation and disinformation things into a lot of, um, a lot of people's brains. And it happens fast because what do you do on social? You look at something, you see a headline, you tweet, re like, blah, 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 and then you move on. Um, that will happen. It's going to affect narratives. It may even affect the outcome of elections, et cetera, et cetera. Be aware. Talk to people about this. Help others be smart because um, there's nothing more important than honesty, integrity, and the continuance of um, truth in this space, in my humble opinion. Anyway, crazy couple of weeks, more stuff coming, good stuff from Dell, um, interesting things from other organizations. Go look at Reddit because that's a really good spot to get information and tell, telling you. Um, and above all, stay smart, stay safe, stay secure. I'll see you on the next one. And if you're in D.C. tomorrow, go to the CSA event in D.C. I'll be there speaking. Lots of other way smarter people will be there. Come listen to them and let's talk about security. See you all later.